Fans looking to build a museum in the home of funk music have a few million obstacles to overcome. And millions of dollars to collect. Annette Pegler spoke to some local funk legends who say they need help to make the Funk Hall of Fame a reality. Come along and ride on a fantastic voyage. For years, artists from the Gym City have produced some of the biggest hits in funk history. Fire. And finally, we'll be able to say, Welcome to the land of funk. Now it's official. Dayton will soon be the home of the Funk Hall of Fame and Museum. City leaders are behind it, and those artists who still live in Dayton say they are humbled to be featured in it. Just the fact of, of knowing that there could possibly be something like this, uh, I'm overwhelmed. 50 years past due because there's so many artists that are funk that came out of the Montgomery County. Groups like Heat Wave, Slave, Zap Band, and the Ohio Players. So where will this one-of-a-kind museum be? Dayton Funk Dynasty Group says it surveyed various locations, but its top contender is Riverscape. Organizers are now focused on doing everything they can to raise money. Please go to any Chase Bank around the world and donate $10 to the Funk Museum and Hall of Fame. The goal is to raise $100 million, which would cover the museum, a restaurant, record label, and other funk-related plans. If you guys don't get the money, what, uh, what will happen? Uh, we, we, we're confident that we'll get the money. We'll still keep campaigning because we have this in our heart, our mind, our soul. The vision of the Funk Center was David Webb's idea. Uh, David Webb and I went to high school together and we worked together at U92 uh, radio station. So when David approached me about this, uh, I knew it was something that needed to be done. It was long overdue. Well, in the beginning when, uh, when a group of people came to me with this, this concept of a Funk Center, I, I was, uh, uh, I guess, I was the guy that, that got several people together to thrash out the idea and my role as the mayor primarily in Dayton was to influence and inspire people to do the best that they could and that's pretty much why we're here. We, we, we had a like a grand event in, in Courthouse Square announcing the concept and we've put it out in people's minds and now we're moving in a forward direction to get results and that's pretty much where my role will be is to is to put the right people in front of the right people to help get to those results. My role with the Funk Center is I'm part of the board. Uh, I'm also going to be helping with the educational uh, portion of one of the uh, modules that will be at the Funk Center. And I hope to educate young artists coming up on the business of music as well as technology. Well, this team came together there's, uh, uh, with starting out with David Webb, uh, and he got together with uh, some other people, and he also approached me and told me about a vision he had, uh, which was, you know, the Funk Center. And uh, instantly, of course, you know, my interest was there uh, because it's way overdue. Well, what I've learned after about 25 years uh, as an executive in human resources is that you get nothing done without the people. And so uh, you need someone who's thinking about all the mundane tasks, about taking care of the people who are getting this phenomenal project in place. And I believe that I have those skills. Uh, David, I, mean, I don't know, what is it, magnetism? He seems to attract good people. Um, I'm, I'm still constantly overwhelmed with the quality of people that he has been able to pull into this project. And I think that has to say it all, that David has a vision and he also has um, some type of magnetism that brings the right people to the table. Uh, my role with the Funk Center is uh, being a part of the board. Uh, looking at things, direction, strategic roles, st st uh, strategic initiatives, those types of things. Well, the way I will use my position and skills to help the Funk Center achieve its goals is to uh, uh, look at my background as a person that's worked in higher education. And from that perspective, 
look at how to help build up partnerships uh, with uh, uh, educational institutions and an affinity with uh, uh, types of uh, programs that deliver uh, educational curriculum just to help build relationships uh, through the educational process uh, to help propagate the awareness of the center and to help the center meet its objectives through that. Well, whose vision is the Funk Center uh, can best be answered by, in this case, would be David Webb. Uh, David uh, is, is a guy that, uh, wow, gets it done. You know, I've, I've, you hear people who say, I'm going to, I'm going to, one of these days, I'm going to, and they say, I have this nice idea. Well, uh, I've known David for years, and he just quietly has put it together piece by piece by piece. And you remember the story about uh, the, uh, the person that was, uh, anybody want to help make the cookies? Anybody want to help cook the cookies? Well, nobody wants to help make it, nobody wants to help cook the cookies, but everybody wants to eat the cookies. Uh, well, David's doing a lot of cookie cooking and, and work with this thing, and, he, and he's got the vision, and he has the energy. He crosses his T's, he dots his I's, and uh, if, you, if you do not have a visionary leader leading a vision, it is really basically a nightmare. So, yeah, this vision is David's vision. And, um, and uh, it's come to pass because of uh, shoe leather that he's put into getting this done. So uh, I, I'm just proud to, to be a part of it and to know him. And, 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 he's, and not only is it his vision, he's willing, he understands that the music itself belongs to us and all of us, including him, all the people that play the music. So uh, I'm, I'm really touched by that, and I'm encouraged by it. It's, it's definitely his vision. You know I got no say about the money, it's about the power. Empire roared tonight with sizzling new music. You may not know it, but Dayton has its own empire of funk music. Tonight only on Fox 45, Amber Jan tells us what a local group is doing to bring the music back to center stage. Every time David Webb gets into his funk mobile, it takes him back in time. That's when the Ohio players were climbing the music charts and other artists like Slave and Platypus were putting Dayton on the map as a land of disco funk. David now has a large collection of instruments and other valuables the artists used. He's working to build a museum to display the history. We want everyone to know that Dayton is the heartbeat of funk music. To be funky meant you were going to have a good time. It meant that it was exciting and there was not a lot of malice in and anger in the music. These are her drawings of what the Funk Center will look like. They're trying to raise five million dollars to complete the project. They're hoping to build it in the downtown Dayton area. When you set foot in the place, it should be just an experience like ah. They also plan to add an educational component to teach kids how to play instruments. Once you play an instrument, it may stimulates your mind, your body, and your soul because we want to go back to the old ways. Those who lived through the 60s and 70s clearly remember Dayton as the funkiest place to be. Now the group is fighting to keep the legacy alive. And those who are experiencing it from the first time can get a, a understanding of what it means to the mothership connection is here. So that is my vision for it. With public donations, they're hoping to build the museum soon to keep the empire of Dayton Funk alive for future generations. Amber Jayant, Fox45Now.com. And if you would like more information on the Funk Museum or would like to make a donation, just visit our website at Fox45Now.com. Are you feeling the funk? You can put your hands together. Come on. Come on. Feel the funk. Feel the funk. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. 
off the funk, huh? Come on. Feel it. Are you feeling it? I can't hear you. Are you feeling it? Are you feeling it? What about this section over here? Are you feeling it? All right, all right. In the 1960s, there was a movement in the South to migrate to the North for jobs and industry. At that time, my family moved from Milan, Tennessee to Dayton, Ohio to discover a better way of life. And that's when I was introduced to funk music at a very early age. At that time, young people were focusing on their art form and music in schools. But I was in the fifth grade at Jefferson Elementary School, <laughs> learning how to play an instrument for the very first time. And I wanted to play the drums. So I went to my music teacher and asked her, can I play the drums in band class? But instead, she gave me a flutophone. She felt that the drums would be too difficult for me to learn. And she said, I couldn't keep a beat. So after school, I ran home to show my instrument to my mother and father, the flute of home. <laughs> you know, my mother was a little disappointed she knew my dreams were to play the drums. That day, in that moment, I learned something. My mother was a drug addict. She drugged me to music class. <laughs> she drugged me to drum corps for band rehearsal. She drugged me to church. She drugged me anywhere possible so I can learn how to play an instrument. <laughs> but in the 19th, early 1970s, there was a group out of Dayton, Ohio, called the Ohio Players. I used to listen to songs like Pain, Funky Worm, Skin Tight and Fire. And right then, I knew I wanted to be a drummer. Then the funk explosion took off in Dayton, Ohio for me, making the gym city the funk capital of the world. <laughs> but there were other innovators who influenced me on my journey for knowledge for funk music. In Augusta, Georgia, there was James Brown, who combined the music genres of rhythm and blues, jazz and soul to an art form which we know now as funk music. In Detroit, Michigan, George Clinton, and also in Memphis, Tennessee, Isaac Hayes. And on the West Coast, in San Francisco, influencing the message of a family and positive culture, his name is Sylvester Stewart, who later became known as his band as Sly and the Family Stone. These gentlemen, among others, planted the seed of funk music as a creative art form in Dayton, Ohio, and they too influenced my career as a professional drummer. After so many years, funk music became a lost art form, fallen to the wayside like art and music classes no longer offered in public schools until the Arts Education and Partnership in conjunction with the President's Arts and Humanities commenced the study to examine the impact and why and how a young person like me at 13 years old were changed due to their art experience. Evidence demonstrates that children with a high level of art participation outperform our poor students by virtually every measure. This study, Champion of Change, found much evidence that learning in the arts help develop habits that will support other disciplinaries. And it can often reach at-risk students when other disciplinaries cannot. The arts provides the young people with authentic learning experience that engages their minds, their hearts, their bodies. <coughs> Art education helps students to learn. It can enhance creativity, self-discipline, and the skills and confidence necessary to meet the challenges and encounters in my life as a student and as an adult. 
So let's do a demonstration, okay? And how to keep a funky beat and keep it on the one. <laughs> because funk music bridges the gap between all races. For example, everybody remember KC and the Sunshine Band? Y'all remember that? Okay, yeah, yeah. Remember the group Average White Band? And a group right here out of Ohio called Wow Cherry. Y'all remember that? Play that funky music white boy, right? Good, good. So let's do a, a little demonstration. So let's do a random song. See if you know this. If I go, there she was just walking down the street, you say? Wow, then that's great. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do this. Let's put a beat to that, okay? Because that's done in a 2 4, okay? So I'm gonna count it off and I want you to help me to sing it, okay? So are y'all ready? Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. There she goes, just walking down the street singing. One more time. There she goes, just walking down the street singing. Good, good, good. Now, funk music is on a one and a three. Okay? So let's take a bit of play that funky music white boy by Wild Cherry. Y'all know that, right? <laughs> let's take it from the part where they go, and if you know what, help me out. And they were dancing and singing and moving to the groove end. And just like it hit me, somebody turned around and shouted. Play that funky music, white boy. Oh, y'all are good. <laughs> Can we put a beat to that? Let's, let's put a beat to that. Let's try it again. I'm going to count you off. So here we go. One, two, one, two, three. And they were dancing and singing and moving to the groove and, and just like it hit me, somebody turned around and shouted, play that funky music, white boy. Good, good. Now some of y'all didn't get it. <laughs> some of y'all still didn't get it. So I need you to do this. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. I want to get funky. Now, <laughs> now, <laughs> turn back to your other neighbor and says, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. neighbor. I hope he gives me another chance <laughs> to get foggy. All right, I'm going to give you another chance to redeem yourself. So everybody stand up. Come on. Everybody stand up. We're going to do a little exercise here, okay? Now, everybody knows how to spell Ohio, right? <laughs> now, if you're from Michigan, Wolverine, I understand it might be a little difficult, but we're going to spell this out using our hands and mouth at the same time, okay? So it's like this. The pattern is one, two, three, four, and O-H-I-O, and O-H-I-O. Now. We're gonna add a little music to that. Y'all ready? Drop the music. Ready? Feel the funk. And. And. O. H. I. O. And. O. H. I. O. Come on. O. Come on. H. Feel it. O. O. H. I. O. In the balcony. In the balcony. O -H -I -O. This section. O -H -I -O. This section. O -H -I -O. This section. O -H -I -O. Give yourself a round of applause. Be seated, please. As I conclude, Ohio is the heart of it all for funk music. And Dayton, Ohio is the nerve center of funk. Music is harmony. Harmony is music. Harmony is the strength and support of all institutions, especially this. Funk music, the empowerment of education in my life. Thank you.
The originator of P-Funk, George Clinton, performed tonight at the Rose Music Center, but his first stop in the Miami Valley was at the Funk Music Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center in downtown Dayton this afternoon. The Hall of Fame is waiting on zoning approval from the city before it can open, but founder David Webb says today's visit from Clinton is a big step. George gives us a booster shot letting him know funk music is alive all over the world, and we're glad he's here. Webb says once they're given the green light to open, the Funk Music Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center will be a major tourist attraction in Dayton. Celebrating Black History tonight with the grand opening of the Funk Hall of Fame right here in the Miami Valley. Fox 45's Rhonda Moore live downtown where a big launch party is taking place as we speak. Rhonda? Adam, we're at the main library, and this is where the celebration is going to get underway starting at 6.30, but you can see right now a lot of people are already starting to come in. Now, the Funk Hall of Fame has a permanent home now. It is a block down the street, but it can't hold all of the people here tonight who are going to be here to honor funk music. The band Slave, the Ohio Players, Roger Troutman. Just some of the bands from Dayton that made it big in the music world. The genre? funk music. Now there's a Hall of Fame center for them. I'm so excited. This is tremendous. It's on fire. Dayton, Ohio's on fire. Keyson Green is a local bass player just finding out about the funk center. It's exciting because we need something like this, especially with the, the history that this city brings uh, musically. It's, it's definitely needed because a lot of people don't know about how much funk and things like that came out of the city. Matt Webster works two doors down from the new museum. I think it'll be really good, uh, good for the community, uh, good for this, this block, good for the street, uh, bring more traffic downtown. Webb is hoping to make the Funk Center here a tourist destination like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. We got the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We got all these Hall of Fames, but there's not a funk Hall of Fame in Dayton. Some of these funk stars all over the world, they need to be recognized. The center has been a labor of love for 10 years. I have a crew that works hard. No one gets paid. It's a grassroots movement, and we're excited about that. Stopping by today before the opening, all over the world. Senator Sherrod Brown and Dayton's mayor. Really been impressed with the leadership of the Funk Museum and the the leadership of the community really coming together to show something really quite beautiful. Everything here is donated. They want to keep the funk alive, and we're so happy that we have their memorabilia and artifacts here. And it's a great thing for the Miami Valley. It costs $5 to get in the museum, or you can donate more. Now, it's at 113 East 3rd Street, Monday through Wednesday by appointment only, and Thursday through Saturday from 11 until 6. And, of course, we're going to have more on this event tonight coming up at 10 and 11. Reporting live in Dayton, Rhonda Moore, Fox 45 News on ABC. I know you're going to dig this.